Hello everyone, my name is Matt and today I will be providing a more in-depth look at how to submit continuous location tickets online using the OneCall Access program. A continuous location is a term used to describe an excavation area that begins at a point and then extends for a specified distance. These types of locations are commonly used to describe work where you may be installing new utilities, new gutters, curbs, and sidewalks, or grading a road. This video will only be covering how to map and describe specific types of locations on your tickets. Due to this, we will be skipping over some portions of the One Call Access program. We have a video on our YouTube page that provides a more comprehensive look at the One Call Access program. If you would like more information about how to use the program to create and manage your tickets, we recommend watching that video first. I'll go ahead and include a link to that video in the video description below. Let's pull up our work area on the map so we can draw out our proposed dig site. In the search type field, we can choose to look up our area on the map with a nearby address, intersection, or GPS coordinate. The information we list in these fields is only being used to search for the area on the map and will not be listed as the dig site location on the ticket. In this example, I'm installing a new water service along the street, so I'll select intersection. I'll enter the street names and city and then click search. My new water line is going to start on 25th Avenue, 100 feet north of Balboa Street, and then go 300 feet north along 25th Avenue. I'll grab the ruler tool and click one time at the intersection. Then I will drag my mouse north along the street until I reach 100 feet and click one time. Then I will continue to drag my mouse north until my added measurement reads 300 feet. This will be the measurement listed in the parentheses. I'll then double click the mouse to lock in the measurement. Now mapping continuous locations can be a little tricky at first because we need to use the polygon tool and draw along the outside edge of our area until it is completely covered. What I recommend is to use the ruler tool and measure the center line of your continuous location like I did here. Now I have a visual marker of the area that I need to map around. I will grab the polygon tool and start clicking around the outside edge of my excavation area using my ruler measurements as a guide. We need to make sure to completely highlight the area where I will be working and match the highlighted area with what is pre-marked in the field. After I've brought my mouse back to my starting point and clicked, the area will be highlighted. Now I can click next and move on to the next step. The information we include in the confirmed dig site section will be included on the ticket, so we need to make sure that it accurately describes the location of our dig site. In some cases, the program might autofill a nearby address that it found as you mapped out your dig site. Since our work area is not taking place at an address, but is instead being done along 25th Avenue, we want to make sure to replace that with the street we are working on. The city looks correct, and I'll now add the cross street we measured from in this field. In the additional details field, I will provide a written description of where my work will be taking place. Since our work is taking place on the side of a street, we also need to include what side of the street we will be working on. I'll start by writing that work is on the west side of 25th Avenue. Now we need to describe where the work will begin by using the word from or at. Since we are starting 100 feet north of Balboa Street, I will write from 100 feet north of Balboa Street. If your work was starting at the intersection where Balboa Street meets 25th Avenue, you would write from Balboa Street to describe that your work starts at the intersection. After that, we need to list where the work will extend using the words go, continue, or extend, and then provide the distance and direction that our work will head in. We'll write go 300 feet north. If you are planning for your excavation work to extend a specific distance into a property area as it goes down the road, you can include a note on the end of your description that describes the specific distance your work will continue into the property. Let's say in this example that I need to extend 10 feet into the property for the entire distance my work extends on 25th Avenue. I'll write and extend 10 feet into property for entire distance. You'll also want to make sure that your dig site mapping covers the area in the property where your work will be extending. In this next example, I am replacing the curb, gutter, and sidewalk along two streets. 
As long as our work is in an uninterrupted line from a central starting point, we can describe the entire work area on one ticket. First, I will look up the streets with the intersection search type. My work area is going to start at the northwest corner of the intersection and then continue 200 feet north on South Jones Boulevard and 200 feet west on Edna Avenue. I'll grab my ruler tool and measure the center line of my excavation area from my starting point at the intersection. I'll go 200 feet north on South Jones Boulevard and then double click to set the measurement. Then I will select the ruler tool again and click on my starting point and go 200 feet west on Edna Avenue and double click. Now I'll select the polygon tool and click around the line I measured out with the ruler tool making sure to completely highlight my work area so it matches what is in the field. In the Confirm Dig Site section, I will make sure that the correct streets are listed in the corresponding fields since this information will be listed on the ticket. Then in the Additional Details field, I will describe the location of my dig site. Since work is being done on two separate streets, and I chose to start my location at the intersection, I will need to first describe the work area along one of the streets. Also, since my work is taking place along the road, I need to include what side of the street my work will be on. I will start it out with West Side of South Jones Boulevard. Then using the word from or at, I will list where the work begins. From Edna Avenue. Now I will need to write how far the work will continue along South Jones Boulevard using the word go, continue, or extend. I'll write go 200 feet north. Now that my first portion is described, I will need to describe the work on Edna Avenue. Using the phrase from same begin point will communicate that the locators will need to go back to the begin point at the intersection to start the second portion of our location. Then we will describe how far and in what direction we need to go on Edna Avenue. Also make sure to include what side of the street the work is on. I'll write, go 200 feet west on north side of Edna Avenue. And with that, we are ready to submit this ticket. In this next example, I am installing some new communication lines that will need to cross over the street as I work down the road. I will use the intersection search type to bring up the streets I am using to describe my location on the map. This excavation area will begin 200 feet east of the intersection on the north side of Terra Avenue. I will grab the ruler tool and measure from Redwood Street along Terra Avenue to the starting point of the work. From this point, the work is going to go another 100 feet east on the same side of the street, so I'll measure an additional 100 feet east. Then my work needs to cross over Terra Avenue to the south side of the street. As I measure that out with the ruler tool, I notice that it's about 35 feet to get to the other side of the street. Then my work will turn and go 100 feet east on the south side of Terra Avenue to the end point. I will double click on the ruler tool to end the measurement. Now using the polygon tool, I will click around the outside edge of my excavation area as it looks in the field, making sure to completely highlight the excavation area. In the next step, we need to make sure that the correct streets are listed in these fields. I'll add the street we are working on here, check the city, and add the cross street here. In the Additional Details field, I will describe my dig site location. Since we are working along a street, I'll need to list what side of the road our work begins on. I'll write North Side of Terra Avenue. Then using the word from or at, we will describe where our starting point is located. In this example, our starting point is 200 feet east of Redwood Street, so I'll write from 200 feet east of Redwood Street. Then we need to describe where the work will go from our starting point using the words go, continue, or extend. I'll write go 100 feet east. At this point, my work will need to turn and cross the street. 
So I'll include the phrase turn and go to explain that my work is changing direction. Then I will need to include the distance and direction that locators need to go in, 35 feet south. We will also want to add a note that we are crossing the street. So I will include crossing Terra Avenue. Using the same phrase, turn and go, we will describe the change in direction from this point and list that work will go 100 feet east on the south side of Terra Avenue. Again, we need to make sure to list the side of street that we are now working on since that has changed from where our work originally started. After that, we are ready to submit the ticket. In this next example, let's say that my excavation area isn't taking place along a street, but instead is being done inside a property area away from the road. Since I will still need to describe my location with a distance and direction from an intersection, I will use the intersection search type to pull up the streets on the map. Then using the ruler tool, I will measure out two distances and directions from the intersection to the starting point of my dig site. It looks like if I measure 100 feet north following Hedge Avenue from Elder Creek Road, I then get to a point where I can head 100 feet east away from Hedge Avenue to get to the starting point of my work site. From this starting point, my work is going to continue 200 feet north. After I double click to set the measurement, I will use the polygon tool and click around the outside edge of my work area, making sure to match my pre-marks in the field. Once that is completed, I will click next and confirm that the correct streets are listed in the confirm your dig site section. In the additional details field, I will begin describing where my work is located. Using the distances and directions we measured earlier, we will need to describe how locators can get to the starting point of our excavation. All right, at a point 100 feet north of Elder Creek Road following Hedge Avenue and 100 feet east of Hedge Avenue. Notice that we included a note that our first distance and direction was following Hedge Avenue. This is important information to include for the locators when explaining where our starting point is. Then we will describe how far and in what direction work will need to go to cover our entire dig site. All right, go 200 feet north. If your work needs to change direction at this point and continue somewhere else, you would include the phrase turn and go and then describe what distance and direction locators need to travel in to reach the end of your dig site. You can continue to change directions as many times as needed to completely describe your dig site location. You will also need to make sure that your dig site mapping matches what is in the field and the location description on your ticket. With all that information confirmed, we are ready to submit the ticket. There are a couple rules that we need to keep in mind when submitting continuous locations. You can only describe a location that is less than a half mile long on one ticket. If the location in the field is more than a half mile, then you will need to submit multiple tickets that are no greater than a half mile until your entire work area is covered. There are some exceptions to this rule though. If your work is taking place on a freeway with on or off ramps, a railroad, a waterway, utility pole corridors, or pipeline right of ways in a rural area, you can submit a ticket with a maximum continuous distance of two miles. If you have any additional questions or concerns regarding continuous locations, please contact our web operations department at web operations at USAN.org.